Because uh, since you're imaging within an abdomen, you're generally going to have deeper penetration, and so that's kind of what we're going to be looking at on that. So the first thing, as I mentioned, look to see, do we see any kind of dead elements or weakened? No, not really. It kind of looks pretty uniform. I would say that looks pretty good. I'd expect that to find. I generally, for an abdomen, you can see up here, other settings, time gain, compensation settings at two-thirds. Mm -hmm. Protopol I've selected as an abdomen general. Um, I've noted what serial number for the transducer because you want to be able to see what it is from year to year. Okay. Uh, and then we have depth of field. So the first thing I normally look at is depth of penetration. I'm going to then move this up to basically 20. Okay. So now I have that set to 20. I'm going to move my focus, make it smaller, and go down to the bottom of the phantom essentially. And then going to, uh, let's see, kind of view the fan. And here you can see, like, you know, it looks pretty uniform. Like in most areas, there's not really, the reason it's obviously has a little bit lower here, you know, we can use the time game conversation probably to try to alleviate some of that non-uniformity mm -hmm. in some of the areas. And then as I said, you know, there, I don't really see any non-uniformities, there's no issues, there's no radial, you know, lines dropping out on any of it. And now we'll look at, okay, depth of penetration. On this one, actually, this normally, let's move the, so you're not really able to, I'd say it's going to, your depth of penetration is probably going to be lost somewhere in like this region. So you can kind of see that this speckle pattern is changing somewhere in this area. Mm -hmm. Um, and so normally I'll do a free still, and this is where I said I, I like the sensitivity probably more testing on a, like an electronic probe tester, but generally speaking, this is kind of what you're doing. You're kind of estimating where it's going to be at, and it's probably somewhere in this range where that you see the speckle pattern changing, mm -hmm. and when you're actually live view imaging it, and then also trying to make sure how well you're able to visualize probably that last anechoic object. Mm -hmm. And so I had 163, and we're looking at like 15, 159. So I'm like okay. four millimeters off of what I measured on a different C51 transducer. Okay. So that's kind of like the general area that you're able to, to, to measure. So at this point, you know, I've noted that I'm at 20. So at the middle, you have your parameters, your depth mm -hmm. of field. You have your time gain compensation. Okay. And now we'll look at some of the other objects. So let's go back down to 16, which is what I have set for most of the other stuff. And the other ones are pretty easy. So we'll just look at, okay, dead zone. We can visualize all five. So I know mm -hmm. that basically I have at least one millimeter resolution for the near field resolution dead zone. Mm -hmm. um, the image uniformity we're looking at. And as I said, you know, we're not seeing any issues. So we're looking up there, the three different I individual items. Mm -hmm. Average brightness of the edge of the scan is the same as the brightness in the middle. Yes. No vertically or radially ornate shadow. So that's what we would be seeing if we saw those dead elements. Mm -hmm. okay. Fine. And there's no brightness between focal zones. So we're able to compensate properly using time gain compensation. It doesn't even, like, so what would be a problem is, say we have these, like, essentially, it look like that. Oh. And we weren't able to, like, compensate with time gain compensation. Yes, that would be an issue. Then we would say there's some sort of issue with the time gain compensation. Okay. Um, and oh. Okay, so the next objects we generally look at, depending on the transducer. So if the transducer itself is capable of imaging this deep into mm -hmm. the phantom, uh -huh. I'm going to assess that image quality. Sometimes you can go overkill. You can assess both here and there. But generally speaking, I'm just going to assess whatever is the ones the deepest mm -hmm. in the phantom that I can actually visualize. So I'll move the focal zone up to that point, mm -hmm. and then I'm trying to see what I can see. Mm -hmm. I can see those objects are separated from one another. Yes. So it has basically, in that direction, one millimeter resolution. Okay. So in the, re the only reason I know that is essentially in the uh, book itself that comes with the phantom, it tells you what the separation is. So mm -hmm. this one, the highest resolution is one. Up here, it's 0.25. Okay. So it's point, it goes 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 1, 2, maybe. And this one, I think, goes 1, 2, 3, 4, or, or, or something of that order. But essentially, it's designated whatever the phantom is. Okay. So if we zoom in, you can look. And then the next thing I'm looking at is the horizontal. And essentially, you know, one, you're trying to see how many separate. So 1, 2, 3. And this is where kind of it plays a little doing like. 
it's going to matter depending on how you have your transducer angled and set. But generally speaking, you can normally see four between those, okay. like one, two, three, and I can kind of, like I said, it's going in and out depending on how I move it. And four separation basically corresponds to a horizontal um, resolution of two millimeters. Oh, cool. And that's, a, that's generally what you're going to see on these larger transducers is normally in the one to two millimeter range. Okay. Um, and what other tests? So we have vertical, horizontal, and then the contrast resolution. Okay. So let's just look at the contrast resolution real quick. So I'll zoom back out for a second. And then I'll go up to the test objects that we're trying to visualize. And I'll zoom in. And then this is where we're trying to basically kind of see what can you see. And here, generally speaking, most of the time, I'm able to visualize all just moving around with the exception mm -hmm. of this one. Mm -hmm. All the other ones, just depending on what your monitor brightness are, you, if you move it around, you're going to be able to get the, the outer peripheral versions of your, uh, of your test object. It's just really that one. And so you can see on there, I put the, the plus three decibel, that no, I can't visualize it. Okay. Um, and sometimes you may even note that the visualization itself goes in and out. Like you can, I have sections on there where you can make comments or notes to saying, oh, I was able to visualize it, but barely, you know, it was going in and out. Um, and then the final two that we'll look at are basically horizontal and vertical accuracy. And so, as I said, so you can see, like, as I push down on it, these separations are going to change. So, oh, yes. there, it basically, that will depend on where you want to make your actual measurements at. So, I'll do a free still, and then essentially, you go to... Um, and you want to go from, like, a center test object to the next test object. So, they're all separated 20 millimeters apart. So that's, you know, in the vertical direction, that's basically right at what we're looking at. You know, 79 as opposed to 80. So that, that's okay. going to be right in that range that you said. That's well under your um, your percent. Like, you know, I said it's either going to be, uh, so that'd probably be about 1.2% or so off. And that's under the 1.5% that would be the thing. So that's pretty standard. Okay. Um, next being you're going to measure your horizontal. So same for thing. From center test object to the center of the next test object, and this can sometimes be more difficult just because of the, uh, essentially because of your beam width, as I was mentioning, you're not going to have as good resolution. And so here we get 61.1, and you have a higher tolerance on this one. As I mentioned, you have, I think it is 3%, so even though it's a little bit further in the horizontal distance off, that you know, you're still able, that's well within. 61.1 minus 60, that's going to be plenty. That's well within your 3% tolerance. Okay. And so that is essentially how, like, it doesn't take long. I mean, you can do more measurements. You can be more, um, you can do more measurements. You can measure, as I said, the resolution here. You can, some people measure the, basically, the geometric accuracy for a shorter distance and a longer distance. It's realistically whatever you feel like is going to, because you're, you're doing a couple of things. You're basically want to manage your time and the department's time that you're going to be able to basically identify what's wrong with the equipment um, by doing the test that you have. Mm -hmm. And so you got to determine, is this overkill or is it actually providing useful information? Uh, and realistically, the only time I'm pretty much failing transducers are the dead pit. Like you, I can pretty much immediately tell you whether there's going to be an issue with the transducer mm -hmm. just from looking at it. At, like just looking at the in air scan. Mm -hmm. um, the other times that I've had issues with tra our systems itself, I've had weird artifacts with the ports themselves where I'll plug a certain transducer in and it'll show a double image. Like it literally mirrors the phantom image across it. And I've only seen that once, and that's what's something where you basically tell the field search engineer there's an issue with one of the ports. It needs to be uh, fixed. I'm seeing it. And then normally I'm taking a picture on my phone of the artifact and including it within my report. Okay. Um, just do, do we have a, do you have a towel or something that can wipe this?